Welcome back to our Kinovio tutorial series. Today we're going to have a look at some of the basic tools Kinovio has to offer. The first thing we're going to do is set up our preferences. Go to Options, Time, and then make sure you set your time to Time plus Frame Numbers. Then you can go into the Preferences menu. In the Preferences menu, under the General tab, you'll want to go to Units, and your units will show probably default in metric units, and that's how I'm going to leave mine. In version 9.3, it's important to open this up and click save every time you load the program if you're going to be measuring anything. Otherwise, it will always default to using pixels as your measurement. If it does do that, you can simply open this menu and click save. Now back in the preferences menu, we have a few more things we want to look at. Under the drawings tab, we can go to opacity. We want to make sure that the fading duration is set to one and that we don't check visible for the entire video. This makes sure that when you're drawing any lines or figures, they're only going to stay for one frame, so you can make sure that your free body diagrams are all cohesive on one frame of the video. If you want your drawings to be visible for the entire video, you can simply check that box. And if you want them to be visible for a certain number of frames and fade in and out, you can have the fading duration increased. One more thing we'll do is go into the tracking tab and set the size of the search window to be a little bit smaller. So I like my windows to be a little bit tighter tracking because we usually use markers. If you're not using markers, you can set your windows a little bit larger. For me, a good size is about 5% and 20% for the object and search windows. Another thing you might want to do is increase your memory utilization. So if you go to the playback tab and click on memory, you can increase that as high as you want. So for me, I'm going to set it up to about 10 gigabytes. The first tool we're going to look at is just simply setting keyframes. What you do is you click on the add a key image button. That'll insert an image at your current frame. If you then scroll ahead to another event, let's say we want to mark right at the bottom of the squat, simply add another key image. You can also label these by double clicking on them and editing the comment. Additionally, anytime you add an object to your video, you're going to create a keyframe in that location. For instance, let's set a reference measure. So in this case, I want to do it with the markers vertical so that we set the coordinate axis to be vertical. I'll show you that in a second. So we know that the measurement between our greater trochanter and knee is 40 centimeters. So we'll simply go across these two markers, right click on the line and calibrate. We can enter the measurement in this tab. Make sure that it's set in centimeters and click apply. Now, if you don't want measurements to show up on your video, you can right click and choose no display measure. Now, the reason why we wanted to make sure that this is in line with the vertical direction is if we go into tools and coordinate system, we'll see that the coordinates are tied into the line. So if I draw a line that's on an angle and set this using calibrate, it's going to shift our axis system. Not something we want to do in this case, but it can be a useful feature if you're trying to get coordinates in a specific axis. So I'm just going to reset this, holding the shift key to make sure that I get a perfectly straight line. And now we can hide our axis. And now we can hide our coordinates again. So now that we have our pixels calibrated to centimeters, we're free to make any measurements we want. So let's say we wanted to track her jump height. We can stick a marker on her hip location here, right click on it and go to visibility and change this single marker to always visible. Now we'll track the peak of her jump. We can set another marker there and then we can use the line tool to measure the distance. Now we can either measure the vertical distance or we can measure the actual displacement of the marker. Again, holding shift to make sure we keep the line vertical. And it looks like she's jumped about 34 and a half centimeters. Now, anything you want to keep in the video, you can keep as a keyframe down at the bottom. If you're not interested in it, you can simply delete any of the extra keyframes that you've created. Now it's important to look at all of the options we have for lines, arrows, and angle markers. Starting off with the line, we can draw a simple straight line, and we can either hold the shift button in order to allow us to draw along clock faces, 
or you can just drag it freehand and set it to any angle that you want. Just like in any other program, if you accidentally add something or delete something, you can press Ctrl Z to undo it. We also have a curve line we can use. Simply press enter when you're done. A very useful one is the polyline tool. This comes in handy when you're representing spines. Again, hit enter when you're done. We also have access to rectangle and circle tools. All of the additional menus in Kinovia are accessed through a long press of the mouse. So simply click and hold and select the tool that you're interested in. With arrows, we have a very similar option. So squiggly arrows will give you a little spring-like appearance. What you'll notice though, is that arrows by default also come with dashed options. However, this can easily be done with the line as well. Simply by right-clicking and accessing the configuration menu, you can change the line shape to a dash or a squiggly line. Another useful tool is the angle tool. Simply select the angle tool, click the center of the joint of interest, dra drag one side up to one attachment point, and the other side to the other attachment point, and you've measured your angle. We have a few options in here though. You can right click and choose whether you want it to be a signed or an unsigned angle. That means that you'll get a positive and negative angle. And you can choose whether you want your angle to be calculated clockwise or counterclockwise. If you have a signed angle, this will change whether the angle is positive or negative. Additionally, you can track the supplementary angle instead. We'll look at tracking of angles and lines in a separate video. Another very useful tool is the text tool. You can simply grab the text tool, click anywhere in the video, and type your text. We also have the magnifier. You can click on the magnifying glass, click anywhere in your video, and it'll give you a magnified window. Right click and you can set the level of zoom. This can be useful if you want to highlight a certain area of the video. If instead you'd like to zoom in for the entire video, simply hold control and scroll wheel in. The next thing we'll look at is our stopwatch. Click on the stopwatch, click anywhere in the video, and it'll give you a timer. Now if we want to look at the time that she's in the air for, we can simply scroll to the point where her feet start to leave the ground. Right click on the timer, start the stopwatch, scroll until she lands back on the ground, and stop the stopwatch. You can utilize as many timers as you want in your video. Another tool you have access to is the pencil tool. If you just want to freehand draw, feel free to use the pencil tool for annotations. I find this is a lot more useful if you're using a touch screen computer. In here, we can also rotate our video. If you go up to image, image rotation, you can set the desired rotation. You can also mirror the video if desired. And lastly, let's take a look at the play bar. 
On the PlayBar, we have a few important features. Number one, we can control the speed of the video. So if we want the video to play faster or slower, just slide this bar to the desired speed. Additionally, we can use the tools to go back to the beginning of the video, the end of the video, or to navigate frame by frame. Another important feature is setting our working zone. This can be done by dragging the work zone bar at the top. Or by scrolling through the video and clicking on the set work zone brackets. If you want to reset your work zone, just simply click the reset the working zone button. If you're happy with your working zone, you can click lock the working zone boundaries to make sure that you don't accidentally adjust it. When you're ready to save, you can click on File, Save, and if you want to save the video, you can click Save Video with Annotations Permanently Applied to the Video, and this means that it'll save any of the changes that you've made, so if you've drawn lines on your video or angles, they'll be included. Or, my preferred method is to click save only the annotations, and that way you're always working with the same raw video file, and this will save a .kva file, which is just an XML file containing the information of the location uh, and configuration of each of the objects you've added to your video. That can then be loaded back over top of the raw video at any time. So if I were to close out our keyframes here, I can click on File, Load Annotations, select the correct annotations, and we have our keyframes back. Important to remember, you can actually load the key images from any video that you've made. So here I'll load the key images from the frontal video, and you'll see that we now have those same key images made in the frontal video, but loaded on top of the sagittal video. The last thing we'll look at are options to save pictures. So you can click Save Image and save a JPEG or PNG or bitmap image of the current frame. You can also save a sequence of images, and this allows you to choose the interval between how many images you want as well. Or you can click on the Save Video and it'll bring up the same menu that can be accessed through the file menu. You can also save a slideshow of your key images if you have any. So let's look at that by going load annotations, load our key images back on, and we can save a slideshow. So this is only gonna show the key images. Here's an example of that slideshow that we made. You can see it just shows each keyframe for a set amount of time. And then lastly, we can save the video with a pause on each key image. This can be useful if you want to highlight something that's happening while retaining the overall play characteristics of your video. I hope you found this useful. Check back into our next tutorial for some more advanced features such as object and angle tracking.